The moon has become the next stage of intense competition. China and Russia are teaming up to install a nuclear reactor on the lunar surface by the mid-2030s, potentially creating restricted zones that could limit U.S. operations. In response, NASA has launched a high-alert nuclear program targeting a 100-kilowatt reactor by 2029, complete with a 30-day deadline to name a project lead and 60 days to request commercial proposals. Energy is the foundation of any long-term presence in space, and nowhere is this more urgent than on the moon. While solar power has powered past landers and rovers, it presents serious limitations for future lunar bases. A single lunar day lasts about 28 Earth days, 14 of those are complete darkness. This means solar panels become unreliable for half of the month, making nuclear energy not just a solution, but a necessity. NASA's recent push for nuclear development on the moon reflects this challenge. The agency is now aiming to install a 100-kilowatt reactor by the end of 2029. This power level is significant, roughly enough to support 80 typical American homes, and would be critical for sustaining habitats, running scientific equipment, maintaining communication, and powering life support systems in the harsh lunar environment. The moon's south pole, where NASA intends to base operations, presents both promise and problems. The area contains regions of permanent shadow, which may preserve valuable ice deposits. However, these same shadows make solar energy generation nearly impossible. A nuclear reactor could operate continuously in this location, offering a steady power supply regardless of light conditions. This is not NASA's first venture into lunar nuclear energy. In 2022, the agency awarded three $5 million contracts for early-stage nuclear reactor concepts. Those contracts laid the groundwork, but the new directive accelerates things dramatically. NASA must now appoint a program leader within 30 days and release a request for industry proposals within 60 days, a timeline that reflects both urgency and strategic intent. This push toward reliable, continuous lunar energy is not just about surviving the lunar night. It's about preparing for long-term operations, building a sustainable presence, and enabling broader exploration. The moon isn't just a destination. It's becoming the starting point for the next chapter of space development, and nuclear power may be the key to unlocking that future. There is now a global competition to build the first nuclear reactor on the moon, and it's centered around two fast-moving timelines. On one side, the United States has committed to placing a 100-kilowatt reactor on the lunar surface by the end of 2029. On the other, China and Russia are collaborating on their own effort. With a goal to install a lunar nuclear power station by the mid-2030s as part of a larger project to build a permanent moon base. The Chinese-Russian joint initiative, known as the International Lunar Research Station ILRS, is designed to create long-term, crew-capable infrastructure near the moon's south pole. This location has become a prime target because of its relative thermal stability and possible water ice reserves, both critical for supporting human presence. The ILRS is not a bilateral effort alone. It includes partnerships with 17 other countries, among them Egypt, Venezuela, Thailand, Pakistan, and South Africa. These nations have aligned with China and Russia to participate in the project's development and eventual operation. NASA, in contrast, has intensified its approach by setting a tight deadline. Its new directive requires the agency to assign a program leader in 30 days and release a request for proposals to commercial partners in 60 days. This shift represents a dramatic acceleration from prior planning cycles. It also highlights how the competition is not just about innovation, but also about pace. The Artemis program, which aims to land the next crewed mission on the moon by 2027, forms a key part of NASA's broader strategy. While many experts are skeptical of the timeline, given the complexity of testing hardware like SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander, the intention is clear. NASA wants to establish infrastructure quickly enough to influence how the moon is shared, used, and accessed. As a result, both sides are racing to build not only power systems, but full lunar ecosystems. The timeline isn't simply a marker of progress. It may determine who influences the future operational framework on the moon.
including how zones around installations are interpreted or respected. As moon missions advance, the discussion is no longer just about landing spacecraft. It's about how activities on the lunar surface are managed, accessed, and protected. A central issue emerging from the new push toward nuclear reactors is the concept of restricted zones, designated areas around key installations that may be off-limits to other nations for safety or operational purposes. The Outer Space Treaty of 1967, which forms the legal foundation for space activity, prohibits any nation from claiming territory on the moon or other celestial bodies. However, it does not clearly define what constitutes operational control of an area when permanent infrastructure, such as a nuclear reactor, is involved. That's where ambiguity enters. In practice, countries may establish safety zones around reactors to prevent interference, protect personnel, and avoid environmental hazards. While these zones are meant to be temporary and technical, they can function as exclusive use areas, potentially limiting access to nearby resources or terrain for other nations. This is one reason the U.S. is moving quickly. NASA's directive may be motivated not only by technical needs, but also by a desire to secure early operational ground before other nations can do the same. Once infrastructure is built, safety zones would be necessary for radiation shielding and operational reliability, but they could also influence how the surrounding areas are perceived diplomatically. The concept of restricted zones is already controversial. While the U.S. introduced the Artemis Accords to establish guidelines for safe, cooperative behavior on the moon, China and Russia have not signed on. As a result, there is no shared agreement on how zones around installations should be respected. This lack of legal consensus may lead to confusion or conflicting interpretations when two nations operate close to each other's zones of activity. With China and Russia planning their ILRS reactor station and NASA targeting a 2029 deployment, the moon may soon host overlapping installations from different global powers. These installations will require safety zones, but without updated international agreements. These zones could be viewed as implied territorial claims, raising complex questions about how governance, transparency, and mutual respect are maintained on a celestial body that belongs to no one. The push to install nuclear reactors on the moon is reshaping how nations approach space. With NASA targeting 2029 and China, Russia aiming for the mid-2030s, what happens next will influence access, infrastructure, and cooperation on the lunar surface. The concept of restricted zones adds urgency, not just to build, but to define how we share space beyond Earth. As more players join the race, the moon is transitioning from a symbol of exploration to a foundation for permanent activity. How we manage that shift may define the future of space for decades to come. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.